But track dope, initially, a lot of people presumed it was just fentanyl. It's certainly not as potent as fentanyl if we were just looking at it by weight. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. B with Dr. B Addiction Recovery. And the question or topic I am going to dissect today is Trank Dope. Which element is more deadly, the fentanyl or the xylazine? This question was initially presented to me as what is more deadly, Trank Dope or fentanyl? I thought that was sort of redundant and we had already addressed that question in the first video we did on Trank Dope. This is our third video. Those are up here where you can click on them. And it was redundant because Trank Dope contains fentanyl and xylazine. And on our first video, we did an introduction and did a discussion of why it is potentially causing more overdose deaths with what people are presumably thinking is fentanyl. So I want to split that up and really present the question and break the elements up so you have a better understanding given what we know about it out there. And so in Trank Dope, which element is more deadly, fentanyl or xylazine? And so let's begin. In some senses, that question is technically what I would call nonsensical. And here is why. You're comparing apples and oranges. Let me try to give it with an example. It would be like someone asking me, hey, what's more deadly, a knife or a bullet? And so you're comparing apples and oranges. And so we can answer this. Let's define some characteristics of each drug so that now we can sort of answer that question and have a better grasp on what we're asking. Let's start with the easier one, fentanyl. Okay, We know a lot about fentanyl, right? And presumably, the trank dope, most people are taking it, and they have always thought that it was fentanyl. It's been around for quite a long time, actually, since the early 2000s in the Puerto Rican population. And, you know, there's a lot of discussion about it now. But trank dope, Initially, a lot of people presumed it was just fentanyl. Then they realized that there's something else in there and it was being cut up with xylazine, an animal tranquilizer. So let's take the fentanyl part first. Fentanyl, a known opiate. What can we say about fentanyl? How deadly it is? Well, the main characteristic that makes fentanyl much deadlier than other opiates is the fact that it is a lot more potent. What does that mean? It means when I measure morphine in terms of milligrams, I am measuring fentanyl in terms of micrograms, a lot smaller doses to have the same effect. Okay. We also know a lot about opiates in general. We know it has a profound abuse potential. It has tolerability. It has increased need of dose. We have all of these characteristics about opiates. We also understand about the respiratory depression, about the lethal dose, and in terms of all of the psychosocial and physiological secondary effects like skin necrosis if you're shooting up, uh, losing your um, sources of income, your family, your mental health. We know all of that, but in general, we know quite a bit about fentanyl, the opiate, and the impact that it can have on you and its deadly effect. If you want to know in particular about fentanyl versus other opiates, I have a wonderful video that's going to pop up on this screen uh, somewhere that really discusses some of the factors that make for fentanyl being a much more deadlier opiate than other opiates and a lot of misconceptions out there about why that is. This video clears it up. It's pretty short. Just go ahead and click on that. But in general, Trank Dope, we're dealing with fentanyl, an opiate, and xylazine. So which one's more deadly? So we know fentanyl, the main characteristic that makes it extremely deadly compared to other opiates is the fact that it is measured, it's much more potent. So it's being measured at a much smaller scale than, let's say, morphine or heroin. 
and there could be, there is a lot less room for error. Additional details about fentanyl in particular, you can see my video on fentanyl overdoses. But other than that, we also know a lot of characteristics about opiates. We know, that, again, like I said, there's a large susceptibility for abuse, for misuse, for increasing tolerance, okay? And finally, you know, it's the respiratory depression that truly causes the overdose potentially. Yeah. Okay, let's move to xylazine. Number one, we don't have data on this stuff for humans. We have a few case reports, okay? And they're looking at getting all this data together and we're going to get data. And we have anecdotal evidence. What does that mean? Anecdotal doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It only means that in the hierarchy of clinical scientific evidence, it's the lowest appreciated type of evidence. Doesn't mean it's bad. All that really means is we don't have formalization of that data and application of statistical methods to give us some sort of answers. That's all that means. And guys that are working with this stuff every day with patients with this stuff are getting a lot of anecdotal evidence. Nevertheless, we don't have much data. That being said, let's move on. Xylazine, what is it? Animal anesthetic, animal anesthesia. What does an anesthetic or an anesthesia do? In this case, it sedates, okay? It's a hypnotic, which means before an operation, you give it to the person. So it kind of messes with their memory. It messes with their tension. It messes with their concerns about being present on the table under a stressful situation. That's what a sedative hypnotic does. It also relaxes the muscles. Keep that in mind. Other properties of this stuff, whether it's in animals or humans, are because it is it hits the same type of receptors that of a drug that many of you know. It's called clonidine. It's an alpha two receptor agonist, presynaptic. All that means for you guys is this. In the peripheral nervous system, it decreases respiratory rate, blood pressure, uh, heart rate. In the central nervous system, it decreases what's called sympathetic outflow, which simply means it relaxes you. And from a physiological perspective, it decreases heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure. Okay? We know those things about it in animals. And the question we want to ask is, and obviously in humans, there's a certain amount. It's going to pretty much, for the most part, presumably do the same thing. So let's ask some questions. In terms of weight, amount, potency, is it the same as fentanyl? Now, that question doesn't really make sense because we're comparing apples and oranges, but we can say this. It's certainly not as potent as fentanyl if we were just looking at it by weight because it's measured in milligrams versus micrograms in fentanyl. Abuse potential, okay? Is the person building tolerability to this stuff? Is the person needing more and more and more of this stuff? Do they redirect their time and their resources in obtaining this stuff and meanwhile having an impact on their physiological, psychological, and social well-being and health. Does it have these properties, okay, the time commitment? And from the case reports that are out there, and there's not much, it appears to be the case where people are abusing strictly xylazine, and these characteristics seem to be applied to them. As far as overdose, if you just were talking about xylazine alone, we don't know what that toxic dose is because we haven't gathered the data on humans. But if you take enough of this stuff, it's going to put you to sleep. And what you would need is intubation, uh, mechanical respiration for you to be able to come out of it. How do you reverse this stuff? As I've discussed before, Narcan doesn't work on it, correct? Because that hits the opiate receptors. You would need some sort of fast acting alpha 2 agonist okay if you can access someone intravenously and from there moving into clonidine but that has to do more with withdrawals so that being said i still argue that the question is nonsensical 
and asking which one is more deadly leaves me a little uncomfortable in responding to that question simply for this reason. Uh, you know, are you asking me which drug should I do? Which one is a better drug to do? That's a silly question. Both of these things are deadly. They have abuse potentials and they can lead to long-term consequences that we still don't understand. Add to this the impact and the effect of the skin necrosis and the long-term skin and chronic wounds that are presenting with people using Trank Bill. So in closing, in terms of which one is more deadly, the take-home things here are, number one, the question is a little bit nonsensical because you're comparing apple and oranges. Number two, there's no utility in that information. There's no use for that information because you really shouldn't be doing xylazine or fentanyl. You don't choose one of the lesser evils to move forward with. And finally, please understand that as far as the clinical foundations of this stuff for humans, xylazine, we haven't gathered, formalized, and presented the data yet. Things are being discovered mainly by the clinicians out there working every day with this population that is either abusing straight xylazine, abusing trank dope that has the fentanyl and the xylazine, and treating the wounds and the lesions secondary to using this stuff. I'm getting a lot of feedback from you, a lot of you guys out there with pictures of the skin wounds and the necrosis and the history of the folks that have been using this stuff. And what I'm starting to gather that is that people that are starting to use xylazine or have been using xylazine have been escalating their dose, having withdrawal symptoms and cravings, which you can see in one of my other videos. And it is a very deadly, toxic substance of abuse. I hope this helps, gives a little more information about all of this stuff out there. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.